Are you aware that you're like a you're a bit of a meme? Uh, I know about the cheese meme. Cheese. That I see that every day. Yeah, every I think day. I see it every day. Hey guys, Jimmy here and welcome back to what is a fairly weird video to be making, uh, not gonna lie. You might notice by the way this intro is being filmed in the shed uh, because I actually forgot to record an actual intro whilst I was uh, at the pub, sorry. It turns out meeting somebody you've been watching for you know over a decade is actually quite nerve wracking. So throughout the entire video I was a little bit nervous and you'll probably see that a little bit but I hope you can excuse it because well it's not every day you get to meet James May but I hope you guys enjoy the video anyway and I'll pass it off to old Jimmy so right now I'm outside as you might have noticed we're not in the shed uh, as much as I like making necrophobic content we're down in Wiltshire at a pub I've actually been to a pub since well, ages since lockdown came. But this is a special pub. This is the Royal Oak Pub. And it's owned by someone you might know, might recognize, one James May. So you might wonder, why am I here, Jimmy? You're a bit too old to be stalking people. Well, I actually got invited along to come um, to, I guess, the first meal. Almost said last supper then, that's not all right. <laughs> the first supper, I like that, the first supper. Trying out the food here, seeing what it's like, and I guess feeding back to Mr. May, as he is brand new to the pub owning game. So not only is this pub sort of in the middle of nowhere, which is actually nice, because I hate people, but you might notice these rows in and out are absolutely tiny, and this is a big YouTuber first world problem. I drove here today in the GTR, and basically did like five miles an hour for about two miles, panicking any time a car came the other way, because the uh, GTR's a bit of a chungus. So, fairly sure that I've taken some bricks out of people's walls, but I don't matter. Don't worry about it. So this all might seem a little bit random, because frankly, it kind of is. I just got the message the other day saying, Jimmy, how'd you like to come down? Uh, to James's pub, which is always a weird thing to think about when you consider that we're just essentially just a gaming nerd. But the structure of the evening, as I'm told, is that we're going to wait for the other guests to arrive. Of course, I'm one of them. We're going to sit down, meet each other, and then we're going to be wined and dined by Mr. May for the evening. I'm not sure if I'm confident about that or not. I've watched a bit of Food Tribe, it's, it's up and down. Hopefully, I'll be able to walk out of this one alive. Now, of course, being the seasoned alcoholic that I am, I went straight for the bar, but the whole place is currently being renovated, so I couldn't get anywhere near it. Plus, of course, COVID guidelines means that I'm not actually allowed to go to the bar anymore. Definitely a weird thing to get used to, but I did get to meet one of the best dogs ever, which made things all better. So after hanging around a bit and after the sun had set, I then got invited into the dining room by the man himself. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Have you scanned the QR code? I have. Thank done. you. Please sanitise your hands as well. And then that's the end of the formalities and you can make your way to the oak room and relax. Thank you very much. Enjoy your evening. As you can imagine, it's a wee bit weird being a YouTuber that focuses primarily on cars and racing and whatever, to then be sitting at a dinner table and being filmed. You can probably see by my bemused expression that I didn't really quite know what to do. If you haven't guessed by now, of course, this whole dinner was being filmed for content for the Food Tribe slash Drive Tribe channels. And I'm not really a foodie, to be honest. I'm the sort of guy to pronounce gourmet as gourmet. I was also very aware that James was lurking just outside the dining room. He was trying not to disturb us so we would be honest about the food and drink, but he wasn't very subtle. <laughs> as I mentioned before, as someone who's very much a one-trick pony when it comes to filming, it was very odd to record dinner and food and all that, and the footage that I recorded wasn't really very good, frankly. But I did get to eat some very tasty food, including some chickpea fritters, a braised beef blade with big carrot, and some sticky toffee pudding, as well as far too much wine. Soon 10 o'clock rolled around and we were shown out of the pub section of the building into our rooms. Now of course I have no footage of this because at this point I was, well let's say, the stabilisation of my camera wouldn't have helped at all. But I can tell you the bed was super comfy because I got into it and then suddenly it was morning. I even managed somehow to wake up without a hangover, which meant that I finally had the chance to speak to James for a bit. Now a bit of a disclaimer, I was very nervous during this interview as you can probably see, so please excuse me if I'm... I don't know, been weird. It felt weird at the time. Hopefully it doesn't look too weird. James, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us very quickly. That's okay. Um, thank so you for coming to my pub. So I guess that's easy first question. Why pub? Everybody secretly wants a pub. Certainly all blokes my age do. And we all think we'd have brilliant ideas about how a pub should be. And most of them are complete rubbish because a lot of pubs still go bust or very best don't make any money. But I mean, how? It's the nearest pub to my little country cottage, and if it wasn't here, there wouldn't be a pub. And uh, I'd have to, you know, drive to the pub, which is absurd. 
uh, all horrendous. sorts of levels. But you can you can cycle, don't you? You do a lot of cycling, so sort of just yeah, wave. You've seen the hills yeah. around here. Yes, actually. The next nearest <laughs> pub, you have to ascend something like six hundred feet, and I'm not going to do that. What's your bright idea then? If everyone's got a bright idea for a pub, what's yours? Um, uh, my bright idea, well, I say mine, it's my idea along with another man called Simon, who's the, he owns the other half of the pub. Mm. Um, our bright idea was to employ Chris, who, you might be able to see him in silhouette against that standard lamp there. That's Chris, he's a very experienced, very straight-talking Yorkshire pub manager. Mm. So we've put him in and said, make this pub work. That was our brilliant business strategy. It's yeah. working so far after one day. <laughs> That's the important thing. Um, something I want to ask you because everyone always um, brings it up in my sort of chat online is: Are you aware that you're like a you're a bit of a meme? Uh, I know about the cheese meme. Cheese. That I see that every day. Yeah, every I think day. I see it every day. Yeah. Am I some other meme? There's also uh, the, the YouTube poops, the YTPs. I don't know. I've seen those. I've seen the pinboard one and the yeah. one where I distorted when the when the skip lands on my car, and I've seen one where I'm playing. <laughs> What's the game I'm in, in a spoof? GTA. GTA, yes, I've seen that one as well. I All three of us are in that, I think. I think one, you're, you're, you're like really foil hats or something. Uh, yes, that's from Top Gear Live or Clarkson and Hammond and May Live when we were in South Africa and we did something with a local rapper and he had a whole selection of those hats and things, so we put them on. Well, you'd be surprised how this stuff just lingers, just stays around forever. Like, they will not go away. That cheese will be there at the end of time. <laughs> so when I retire, they won't all be automatically deleted? <laughs> no, I mean, you, you, you can, the raw cheese and the cheese grip, you're, <laughs> you're laughing. <laughs> so does that mean when I'm really old and sitting in a bath chair in this garden, people will still come up to me and slam things in and go, cheese! I nearly did, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Do I make any money out of being a cheese meme, Lucy? No. Uh, what else was there? There was something else. Um, it was Bottom Gear. Yes, I've seen that as well. Yeah. I do watch this stuff quite a lot. I'm a bit of an insomniac and I spend a lot of time at night on YouTube and social media and eventually, you, you know, wherever you start, you know, you look at uh, aviation history in 1920s America, but within five or six clicks, you're back to cheese pies <laughs> and sandwiches of the 70s because YouTube likes to recommend me to me. That is a bit odd. I've, I've done similar stuff in my videos actually, but not quite. That level, so it said because you were because you are you, you might be interested in you yeah, of how your video is doing. Yeah, yeah. actually, I am. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll you, can't up, you can't help <laughs> looking, can you? That's, that's, we all pretend we don't, but we do. So there's, um, I specialise in sim racing, so pretend I racing. Yes. Um, I was originally a long time ago meant to, I think, teach how to drive in Project Cars two or something like that, but then they really came together at the old office. Yes, I think. Covid probably got in the way of that, or probably, yeah, yeah most things something do. or laziness. Um, similar, <laughs> yeah, I think it was similar actually. affliction. Have you um, no. done much? <laughs> no. <laughs> Flight simulators, I have. I've done a little bit of driving sims, but I find them slightly frustrating because I start to get bogged down in, is that actually realistic? Oh, and the yeah. other thing is, we do, I mean, with work, we do quite a lot of, we do a bit of track driving, and we've done recently a bit of grass track racing, and, and we done quite a bit of that historically and it's already quite difficult if you're on say a grass track yeah. in some old cars with Jeremy Clarkson and Richard Hammond where you're trying to drive into each other and you know, <laughs> nudge the back to spin them round that's all great fun then when you're driving home on the real road in your own car it's very difficult sometimes as you approach a roundabout not to think I'll just <laughs> nudge this bloke out of the way because <laughs> so if you were also doing it every night on a sim then I, I've not had I don't, that before. I'm not saying that sims are bad or they create bad driving, I don't believe that, but in my case, I think it might get the better of me. I think I the might only, start to believe it. Yeah, the, the, the only occasion I've had with that is when like, I, le I learned to do the, the heel and toe in the simulator, and I get into my old rusty Mazda, I'm a race car driver now, and go out up to a roundabout, I'm like, why am I doing, up, yeah. why, why am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> this is stupid. Yeah. There was one last thing, because I hear you're quite into bikes, and I've been trying to, oh, I'm doing the lazy thing, but I'll buy a bike soon, do some exercise, get a road bike, yeah. but I haven't got around to it yet. Any recommendations for someone who just wants to get on a one, not be fat? Well, I'm not a bicycle expert. There's a lot of advice on this online from things like Global Cycling Network, Cycling Weekly Online, and so on. But I think if you're gonna start on a road bike, I would always, I've got a basic road bike at home. And when I say basic, I mean it's a, an entry level bike, but from a very respected maker, it's a Cannondale. I've also got a basic Boardman from years ago. And I think the key is to spend 
sort of seven, eight hundred pounds and make sure you get a decent quality frame from a well-known maker. It will have more basic components on it, like it won't have particularly light wheels, it'll have the entry-level group set, so you've got slightly slower and clunkier derailleurs. You can upgrade those things quite easily if you really get into it. If you want to upgrade the frame, you've really got to start again with a new bike. So I'd say the Cannondale CAD Optimo is a nice bike, and I think is about 700 quid, 750 quid check though, that could be wrong. Um, there are entry level ones from Bianchi, Specialized, all, all those sorts of people. That are, that's what I would do. Okay. Because also the other truth is learn to maintain it properly, which is something I know I've grown on about a lot, that a, an entry level bike properly set up is better than a posh bike sloppily set up. Yeah, sure. Because they just don't work properly and then they become irritating. So that's what I do. I've probably got one I can sell you somewhere. I've got too many bicycles, definitely. You remind me of my neighbours next door who are essentially just bicycles Horse slash bike oh. people. <laughs> oh, what, just bikes? Yeah, just no beards and yeah, bike oil. Yeah, yeah that, that sort of people. So yeah, they're, stains they're, on trousers. And, yes. they're, they're quite handy to have around there. So it's good yeah, they always wear funny shoes. Big yeah. boots, massive boots. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Jane, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us. Thank you so much for inviting me down. It was a, no it was pleasure. A good meal. It's all right. You all paid, so uh, we're happy as well. Yeah, over the odds. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you staying for a bacon sandwich? I think I will now. They're here, definitely. I think yours are coming out first. You've actually pulled rank on bacon sandwiches on the basis that you're leaving earlier. Oh, there you go. <laughs> After our little chat, James very kindly offered to show me a few beginner road bikes that would suit me and my noodle legs. But yeah, that was my experience of being invited to James May's pub. And what else can I say other than it was just surreal? You get so used to seeing people on TV and on the internet, well then when you see them in real life, you sort of think, are you a real person? And it was really nice to see that James was pretty much exactly the same person that he is on, on the TV and other various shows. So that's always a nice thing when you get to meet someone who is as they seem. And of course, I have to say a massive thank you to James and the guys at Drive Tribe for inviting me down and letting me uh, record and eat their food and drink their drink uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed this very different video if you did like comment subscribe do all the good stuff um, I can honestly say that this sort of video probably won't happen ever again but it doesn't mean that it wasn't fun to make take care have an awesome day and I'll see you all next time